Hi, this is Mr. Rubenstein, and this is the third part of the, I'm um, going over the June 2008 Math B Regents. We're up to question number 13. Question 13 says the value of square root of x squared minus 9 is a real and irrational number when x is equal to. Well, um, we don't want it to be negative underneath the radical. That would make it not real, but imaginary. And we, want, we don't want the thing under the radical to be a perfect square, because that would make it real and rational. So I'll try the four choices and see what happens. Choice one, I get 5 squared, square root of 5 squared minus 9, which is square root of 25 minus 9, which is square root of 16, which happens to be 16 is a perfect square, so that's 4. So that's real, but it's rational. If you try choice 2, you get square root of 0 squared minus 9, which is the square root of negative 9, which is 3i, which is imaginary. Uh, if you put in negative 3, you get negative 3 squared, which is positive 9 minus 9, which is 0. Uh, square root of 0 is real, but it is rational. But finally, when you put in choice 4, square root of 4 squared minus 9 is square root of 16 minus 9 is the square root of 7. And that is uh, real, but it is irrational. And that's your answer for question number 13. Question 14 says um, 2 to the 4x plus 1 equals 8 to the x plus a. Now the thing about this question to realize is that 8 can be written as a power of 2. And when you do that, when, when you write 8 as a power of 2, this question becomes much easier. See, I have 2 to the 4x plus 1. And I rewrite 8 as 2 to the 3rd. To the, I'm going to put parentheses around this x plus a, make it uh, make it a little bit easier. <clears throat> so uh, I'll copy this two to the four x plus one. You raise a power to a power by multiplying those powers together. Don't forget to distribute three x plus three a. If you leave off that, if you just write three x plus a, you won't get the right answer. Now that the bases are the same, I can just find out for what values are the exponents equal to each other. And <clears throat> in this question, they wanted to know, uh, they wanted you to solve for x. So I'll subtract 3x from both sides. x plus 1, and finally subtract 1 from both sides. To get the answer, x equals 3a minus 1, which was choice number 2, and that's question 14. Question 15 says that in 1995, the government paid off one-third of its debt. If the original amount of the debt was 4, hmm, trillion nine hundred and twenty billion uh, dollars which expression represents the amount that was not paid off you see they've got this word not here and that's real important you want to, you want to read uh, the question carefully um, looks to me like these two choices here are related to if the if, the, uh, if the, how much was paid off so just be careful about that the answer I already know is either going to be three or, or four uh, let's look at this big number. Uh, to change this number into scientific notation, we write it as 4.92 times 10 to the, it's going to be times 10 to a uh, positive power because it's, it's, it's a really uh, big number. Uh, you'd have to move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 10 to the 12. That's the original number. 
Uh, they want to know <clears throat> uh, what's basically two thirds of of this number, because that would be how much is left. Or you could figure out one third, and then uh, and then subtract. Uh, I think I'll I'll do it that way. Four point nine two. I could use a calculator, but I'll do it old school. Uh, six four. So 1.64 times 10 to the 12th is how much they've paid off. If you subtract 1.64 from 4.92 times 10 to the 12th, you will get 8, 2, 3, 3.28 times 10 to the 12th which happens to be uh, choice number four. Question 16 says the expression 2 over sine x minus 5 over sine x minus 1 is equivalent to. So what we have here is um, <clears throat> subtracting fractions. Uh, I'm going to compare this question to an easier question, which would be something like this. 2 over x minus 5. This would be a little bit easier of a question. This x and x minus 1 don't have any common factors. So uh, to get the least common multiple, you just multiply the two things together. Um, I'm going to now move on to the situation we have here, where, again, these things don't have any common factors. So I'm just going to multiply them together. So the common denominator is going to be sine x. times sine x minus 1. Uh, the new numerator is going to be 2 times sine x minus 1. And the new, the new numerator here is going to be 5 times sine x. Sometimes when there's a negative here, you got to be real careful. If this thing was more complicated, you have to distribute it through, but not in this case. 2 sine x minus 1 minus 5 sine x over sine x times sine x minus 1. I find it's better to not multiply these things on the bottom together because maybe something will cancel out later. 2 sine x minus 5 sine x is negative 3 sine x minus negative 3 sine x minus 1. And on the bottom we have sine x times sine x minus 1. Let's look at the answer choices. Maybe they multiplied those together in the answer choices. No, they didn't. Um, minus, hmm, minus 2. Oh, see that? I made an error there. So when I multiplied this, this 2 needed to get multiplied through. Nobody's perfect. That's why you want to check your answers on the regions. These are all twos here. So the answer is minus 3 sine x minus 2 over sine x times sine x minus 1. And that seems to be an answer choice there, choice number 3 to number 16.